right, Coach. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Sunshine State in TIAA Bank Field here in Jacksonville. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line with Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Now a first carry for T.J. Yeldon. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Deron Harmon makes the tackle. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Here's Leonard Fournette, thousand-yard rusher from a year ago. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. And the Jaguars send out their punter. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Let's take a peek at the Patriots' schedule before they go again here on offense, Charles. They start off, of course, with that home tilt with the Texans, then two on the road at Jacksonville, Detroit, and then back home for the Dolphins. Hey, those first two weeks are tough. They really are, and what I like about them, though, is there's Tom Brady. He is the present. The best, maybe, that's ever played the game, if you ask a lot of people. But here comes Deshaun Watson from the Texans to challenge him. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then they go to Jacksonville, the team that they had to beat last. He's got a man complete. The 20, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Chris Hogan, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Pats have taken the early lead. And that time, he came out of the slot for that big play downfield for the score. I think what we just saw there, partner, was what we call scheming a guy open. Put him in the slot, know that he has tremendous speed. What you're doing with your other receivers is likely running shorter routes to draw the attention closer to the line of scrimmage to give him a chance to get downfield and turn it into a one-on-one -on -one route, often against the safety. You like your odds when he's running against the safety. His speed usually wins, and it did on that play. Koskowski now out to kick it away. Here's Corey Grant now to return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And an alley to run. And room to run as he's out past the 35-yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. On second down, here's Bowles. And Austin Safarian Jenkins has it. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Portals to the former Jets, Safarian Jenkins for the Jags' first down. 
When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. A first down carry now for Yeldon. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Green 80. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. And the Jaguars send out their punter. On for his second. And this is blocked. The Pats bring heat and they get home. It's picked up. And this is a live ball, remember. So they get there. They get the block. That can turn out to be a big play. Everyone's looking for a difference maker. Everyone's looking for an edge. If you get a block cut in special teams, that could be the huge difference that you're looking for. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. They'll run it now out of the gun. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. At this stage of the game, the run-pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of their yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll make it second and goal. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Now they'll throw with Brady. This will be caught at about the six. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion. They would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. So now on fourth down, on comes Steven Goskowski to try and get the patch three. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. try and throw here on the fake. They pass up the three, fake it, it doesn't work. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. Well, that was an intriguing call. You got a chip shot field goal, 
tight game. Why not just take the three? I know that not all the old rules apply in today's NFL, and in fact, I'd love to have an analytics coach here with us right now to say why that was probably a good play. I don't know that even the analytics coach would have said that. That seemed like a bad play. Take the points there and move on. On second down, here's Fournette. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. They go play action here on first down. They're connecting here with DJ Shark. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Now a play fake here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it, got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. 380. 380. Shotgun now for Bortles. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and 10. 380, 380. <laughs> Bortles to throw once more. And incomplete on the deep ball. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. And the Jaguars send out their punter. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin them back. The Patriots offense now. They work their way back onto the field. Brady and the Patriots now. First and 10 at the 20. 1st down is Brady. And a dump off to White. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll bring up second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. From the gun, it's Brady. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Wait, 20! Brady going to give this one to Burkhead. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? It's important to do, especially early in the game like they have. 
Brady now on first down. And Philip Dorsett holds it in. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Let's go, let's go. Wait, 20. Brady to throw on second down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Philip Dorsett, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Shotgun now for Brady. Room here to run. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And down to the 29-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. Brady now already over 100 yards passing in this first quarter. It's first and 10. They'll run. This is Burkhead. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Patriots in possession to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down and eight to start things out. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. New England on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and eight. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. A play fake for Burkhead. Now Brady. They will find his man. That's Hogan complete. And down inside the 15 he goes. Brady finding Hogan on third down to the Patriots. Able to convert. The goal for any offense versus his own defense find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Wait, 20. Wait, wait, wait. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Early down stuff will put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Second down, here's Brady. Goes underneath here to White. 
And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Call it a gain of three, and that's going to lead to a third and 12. Well, it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center-eligible stuff, but still, a lot of guys to account for. Throwing is Brady on third down. This will be caught just inside the 10. And out of bounds all the way down at the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Operating from the gun, Brady looking middle, and it's incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, Four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. He'll get it up the middle. And he's over the line and into the end zone for a Patriot score. It's the fullback taking it in from two yards out. And the Patriots add on to their lead. And they just powered it in right there, Charles. Three tight ends out on the field. The fullbacks for the defense, they knew what was coming. They knew, but they weren't able to stop them. They knew they had to meet them with a little bit of force. But on that play, the big guys up front won the day. Goskowski with the extra point. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Koskowski now out to kick it away. To return it is Corey Grant. And his guys are going to start their drive right at the 20-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Pardon, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice, explosive run. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Yeldon. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that's going to lead to a third down. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. Taken in at the 22. And call that an even 50 yards on the punt with seven on the return. And the Patriots take over. And the Patriots gearing up to go now. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. 
By 20! By 20! By 10! They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, add that play to his resume reel because he went to the Pro Bowl last year. That's how you go to the Pro Bowl. You make plays like that, big time penetration, and throw people for losses. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. On third and long, it's Brady. He's going to look deep down the field. And I think that one might have been intercepted, but he will be ruled out of bounds. So this will go only as incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They'll start out on the ground. It's T.J. Yeldon. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. Bortles. Wide open receiver complete. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Austin Safarian Jenkins, 81 yards. And the Jaguars are able to strike quickly for six. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. Point after by Lambo up and good. And that'll make our score 14 to 7. Lambeau out to kick this one away. On the return, here's a dangerous Cordero Patterson. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now out come the Patriots. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. This is Jeremy Hill, the former Bengal, his first carry. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. 
on a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. To throw, it's Brady. He's going to float this one deep right side. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. Here's Ryan Allen now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And now out come the Jags. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They begin with a run by Yeldon. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. On second down, here's Yeldon. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Calling a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Jaguars on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. From the gun, it's Bortles. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Let's make a quick pivot here to revisit a topic from the last couple of weeks. We've been discussing, well, which rookie starters are going to be in there week one. It appears to be only one right now, Sam Darnold of New York, correct? That sounds correct based on what we've heard from the different teams. All of them have made their announcements and their proclamations about their starter, and Sam Darnold's going to get the ball to begin. But for me, it's how long will he remain the only rookie starter? I don't know it will be terribly long. I look in Buffalo, I think Josh Allen will get his shot fairly early. I look in Arizona, I think Josh Rosen the same, depending on how their teams come out of the gate. And at some point, Baker Mayfield will play this year for the Cleveland Browns. Seems to be more pressure each year on these franchises to get the, the, the rookies in there early, doesn't it? It certainly does. When you spend that type of draft capital, that type of money, we don't wait nearly as long. And the good coaching staff meet these kids halfway with what they did in college and turn them loose in the NFL. Open man is Westbrook complete and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory his first catch and it's a pretty big one they get the conversion on third down so into Pat's territory now here's first and 10 at the 46 Borrell's gonna throw He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And a loose football. And it's picked up by the Patriots. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. 
So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. 18 big yards on that one. And a New England first down. First down. That's Cordero Patterson hauling it in. 14 yards is the pickup there and a New England first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Brady now, 8 of 15 through the air, but it's first and 10 here. From the gun, Brady into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Deshaun Gibson, and they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. He was looking for Gronk that time. Well, as we look back to the final week of the preseason and the roster cuts, that final day roster cuts, a lot of noise was made. The biggest noise, though, Khalil Mack moving to the Windy City. That's one that, let's look at it from Chicago's perspective. A young team growing, building on both offense and defense. And it's a city that loves defense. They love their linebackers. Khalil Mack being added to that group, that's just a win-win for them. Now you flip it over to Oakland. I never thought they'd let Khalil Mack go. I thought they'd figure out a way to get it done. But somehow, during the contract negotiations, everything broke down. And they decided to save that money, and they'll put it elsewhere in their roster. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Bortles now to throw. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Now we're going to get a timeout here called by the Patriots. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. That throw by Brady, incomplete. Want to make a quick pivot here for a second to get your MVP predictions going into week one of this season. Do you have Rodgers, Brady, Wentz, Brees, or is it somebody kind of off the radar a little bit? Yeah, maybe a Russell Wilson because the offense runs through him now in Seattle, and quarterbacks always get the first look. But I'm going with a running back, Todd Gurley, uh, Los Angeles Rams. I think he's a threat for 1,000 yards in the ground and 1,000 yards through the air. He's that type of a player. So you're going Gurley. What about Deshaun Watson? Any shot there? Certainly. Look at the numbers last year. When he played, they averaged over 30 points per game when he was a starter. When he didn't play, those numbers fell off in a big way. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions.
New England on third down. They've hit four of seven. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. Operating from the gun, Brady. And this will be broken up and incomplete. Now a penalty flag down, and they may be going backward here. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against them. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Now Burkhead, and he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. And now the Jags defense deciding to call a timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Ryan Allen now, standing just outside his own goal line. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And we'll see what he can do on the return. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Second down, here's Bortles. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Chung. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. Charles, when plays like that work, it's a thing to behold, but sometimes we see why they're very deep in the playbook. And how many times have we been at practice and heard all the other guys chirping about, you know, I used to play quarterback in high school. I can do this until it becomes a game situation. Not quite the same in many cases. A very solid gain of 27. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make a play on the football. inside the 20 at the 19. Dante Fowler in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. And they try to get the spike off, but it's not in time. So at halftime, it's the Patriots with the advantage. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach and our EA Sports halftime report. Now it's Patterson. 
And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Now Brady throwing on second down. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Hogan. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. Well, sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands, don't you? I mean, the offense is really struggling in this game. They're the ones keeping go, things going. Go. They have to continue to play at that level. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. Go go. Throwing again. Brady throwing the out route incomplete. That's Hogan. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. On play action, it's Brady. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Here's Ryan Allen now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. That, that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker board? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Well, with that incompletion, gives us a chance to get Charles Super Bowl picks. We've done this the last couple years going into week one. Who do you have this season? Well, it wouldn't surprise anyone at all for Philadelphia oh, and oh. New England to do it again, this time in Atlanta. But I think it's going to be a couple of different teams out of both divisions, all right? Both conferences, I should say. I think coming out of the NFC, I really like Atlanta. Wow. I think they're going to get back to the Super Bowl again. At the AFC, I think it's going to be Pittsburgh. And ultimately, I'm taking Atlanta to hoist the trophy. And you know where the Super Bowl is this year. It is in Atlanta. The first time ever we're going to have a home team win in their home stadium. You heard it here first. Here we go. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. And the Jaguars send out their punter, standing just about on his own goal line. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. So the Patriots coming out now. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Now a play fake here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. On the incompletion, I turn to you as we continue to do all these week one predictions. And I ask rookie of the year, could this be a battle? for Gotham between Darnold and Barkley. Let's go, let's go. I like it. I like that a lot. A quarterback, Sam Darnold with the Jets, a runner, uh, Saquon Barkley with the New York Giants. But I'm thinking defense, and I'm going out west to the Denver Broncos. Bradley Chubb, uh -huh. defensive end, outside linebacker. Remember, Vaughn Miller's on the other side. He'll take up a lot of attention. That should give Chubb more one-on-one -on -one opportunities to get quarterbacks on the ground. That's real good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. New England on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and eight. Wait, 20! From the gun, Brady. And Gronkowski's got it. Complete over the middle. And at a 42-yard line here and brought down there. It'll be a gain of eight, but it also lead to a fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. The safety Patrick Chung is the one who makes the stop. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the past. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. They'll run it again with Fournette. <laughs> And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Jaguars on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll try to run for it with Yeldon. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Let's go, now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. They get one yard back there to make it second and 14. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Hey, 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 hey. 380. 380. 
Again, it's Fournette. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Shotgun now for Bortles. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. 23 yards on the play. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Sometimes we wonder about play calls, but this one made perfect sense to me. He's got the only touchdown that they've scored in this game. Tried to get it to him again on another deep ball. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. To throw is Bortles. Throw left side complete. It's Cole. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Bortles now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Bortles on the give to Fournette. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Fournette on the counter. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Dante Hightower on the stop. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The Jaguars on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and five. Green 80. Green 80. Green 80. Snap comes at one, and it's Bortles. He goes underneath for Yeldon. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Give him three on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And Lambo will put this one through, and they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Huh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out? The, just because you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Now, after the main field goal, back out. Lambeau to kick this one off. Now it's Patterson. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. 
They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at the 31-yard line. They'll run now with Burkhead. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. That's going to set him back five yards. Brady to throw on second down. Throw out right, taken in by Patterson. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. New England on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This time they face a third and two. A play fake for Burkhead, now Brady. And that is incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Here's Ryan Allen now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting upfield and giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. The Jaguars getting set to go. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not on now joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. And maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second down. Not an ideal spot to be on first down, but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say, okay, we got to throw it in order to pick it up. Stayed with the run, was rewarded with a big-time pickup. Now they're in second and manageable. Bortles now on the option left side. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. He lost four there, and it's third down. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. Green 80. Green 80. Back now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And to the tight end here, Safarian Jenkins. And down he'll go at the 25. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, 
it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. This is brought in at the 21. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. On second down, here's Brady. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch. Is the arm there? The leg's still there. This has been a tough game. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Open man there is Patterson, complete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. That'll be a Patriot first down as Brady finds Patterson. The former All-Pro Marcel Darius brings him down. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Malik Jackson there to make the stop. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. Now Brady. And this is caught. It's pulled in by Gronkowski. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They come out here in the eye. Brady now to throw. And caught by Hogan for a Patriot touchdown. Chris Hogan, his second touchdown of the night. And the Patriots add six to their lead. So a tiptoe catch back of the end zone, so tough to do, but he made it look pretty easy. He certainly did, and the back of the end zone is treated the same way as the sideline. You have to get your feet down in bounds for it to count as a catch. How about the backgrounds of some of these guys, though? Did they work on it? Maybe some of them were ballet, some dance, who knows? Yeah, you and I were talking the other day. I remember one of my favorite kid shows growing up. I don't know that I want to name it, but... Guys like Lynn Swan, they used to be on there showing their ballet skill. And you have to remember when they were kids and their parents would tell them to take the ballet classes, you know they were fighting them like crazy. But right now they're saying, thanks, Mom. <laughs> Koski now out to kick it away. 
The return man is Grant. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. On first down, Bortles. Open man right side is Shark. A gain of six there on first. Decent start to the drive there. Of course, they need the touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Yeah, those guys are into it. How about the guys on the sidelines? You see the coaches signaling, all the personnel groups up on the sideline, ready to go in and out of the game. They've got to condense their time now in order to try and get back into it. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. 380. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. That one complete, he finds Sharp. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Bortles now on first down. Shark's got it, left side. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Again, they'll throw with Bortles. And complete over the middle, Safarian Jenkins. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. See in that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice <laughs> game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Now Bortles over the middle, hauled in by Sharp. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. Into the red zone, it's Bortles. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here, this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was gonna get sacked. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Bortles to throw once more. They go with the screen. It's Yeldon. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. It's a six-yard loss on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. to Fournette. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. A loss of a yard and it brings up fourth. The best offenses and the ones that win are ones that make adjustments. And right now, I think this team needs to open things up. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And Lambeau will put this one through, and that'll make this an eight-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back. 
preferably a takeaway. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambo to kick this one off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Patriots' offense now, they work their way back onto the field. The field goal we just saw has this now at a one-score game, and on this side of the football, things are getting pretty tenuous, a little stressful. Blood pressure up a little bit, you think? I think up a lot of it. Uh, could you imagine taking the <laughs> pulse right now? It might be like a jackhammer out there on that side of the ball, but here's what the deal is. I think what we've observed is a team that's been playing not to lose as opposed to playing to win. And they've got to get back to that. And that means opening things up again, being a little more free than what they're trying to get done on offense. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Wait, 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 wait. To throw again, Brady. High throw, but the catch is made. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Shotgun now for Brady. Looking for Gronkowski, and he's got him complete. 20, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Rob Gronkowski, 68 yards, and the Patriots add on to their lead. Charles, that was a heck of a play. It truly was because when he made that catch, he had to shake through some people, right? So that play, to me, a highlight film, that should be accompanied by bass music, right? <laughs> I mean, boom, 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 and he finds his way to the end zone. Terrific play. Extra point good by Goskowski, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Koski now out to kick it away. Here comes Grant on the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Bortles gives to Yeldon on the draw. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Green 80. Green 80. From the gun on third down, Bortles. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Cole. Bortles to Cole for the Jacksonville first. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. 
What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. On first and ten, here's Bortles. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, go, knowing go. each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Back to the air on second down. It's Bortles. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Throwing on first down is Bortles. He'll get this over to Westbrook. It's complete. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Again, it's Bortles. Safarian Jenkins has it. What a methodical drive this is turning out to be. That time, nine yards, and the sticks move again. Clock running, about to hit 90 seconds to go in the game. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Dances by him. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Now the Jags are moving quickly in the hurry up. On second down, here's Bortles. This is Yeldon on the dump off. And he'll go down at the 28. Four yards on the pickup, and just like that, it's third down. Bortles now to throw. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The intended target, the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins. And that'll bring up second down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Now Bortles again. And it's caught. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Dante Moncrief. A 20-yard touchdown, and the Jaguars get a score closer. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> So with 40 seconds left, we'll see the onside kick. If they've ever needed one to go their way, it's now. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And now the Jags defense deciding to call a timeout as the clock will stop with 35 seconds left to go. Now the Patriots gearing up to go now. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense getting the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. 
So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Again, they run with Burkhead. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. And now the Jags get a signal for another timeout as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. The Patriots in the victory formation as they'll take the knee. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Take a knee here, and that should just about do it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are that? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. Football League, Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you prime the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From Jacksonville, good night, everybody.